Hey everyone, this is Fix Reef, and today we have this Casio A360W up for repair. The problem that it came in with is that if you plug it into the power supply, it turns on momentarily and then shuts off right away. So uh, let's find out today what, what's going on with the light and see if we can have it repaired. Let's take it apart first. Okay, so this is the partially disassembled light. Uh, there are still a few things that we need to unplug. And that exposes uh, two, basically two boards. The top board with the power and the lower board with the uh, LED channel circuits. So far, again, everything is Everything is looking fairly good on the LED control circuit board, but uh, I haven't actually seen the power board yet. So let's uh, let's get that guy out. All right, looking closer at this board, I think I right away see a problem on the on the um, LED uh, control circuit. Take a look at this. I'm not sure if you can see this, but there are a couple of what appears to be resistors that are. Um, dark or maybe not resistors there is definitely a short of some kind that causes the problem let's look at it under the microscope okay so right here you can see that these two inductors 400 and 401 first of all have completely um, uh, lost its coating and also moving quite a bit inside so both of these are dead and um completely gone now this however is a problem because inductors don't just blow up inductors blow up when there is a whole lot of current coming through and they are the weakest link somewhere in here there is a short and the short is caused by um a component that's that's not working so we'll need to find out we need to find out if uh, we can find that component. By now, I know how to find the short, right? So we're gonna just attach uh, power, low current power, into this light. Turn it on and see if anything heats up. Okay, so right away it goes into a dead short. Let's see if, uh, if there's anything that's hot around this area. This diode over here, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but this diode over here, has some very suspicious state. It's uh, there is a ball of solder sticking from under it, and some in general just dark area over here. So I think that this diode over here is likely gone. Yeah, the diode is heating up significantly. Oh, wait a minute. Other than the diode, there is a MOSFET. Ah, I wonder if we have a dead MOSFET. That probably explains a whole lot. Yes, there is a MOSFET on here that's that's definitely hot, more than anything else. So the MOSFET is bad, likely, and the MOSFET is causing all of the other components to um, to fail. Okay, so I removed both of the inductors that were uh, suspects and measured them, and it turns out that the inductors are actually okay, uh, but uh, there is definitely damage to the board when they heat up. 
um, it, when they got overheated. So let's clean everything up here. And now let's reinstall the inductors back. I'm just going to add a little bit of solder. Um, let it solder anyway. Okay, and let's put the inductors back in. And remember that previously these inductors were kind of loose because they got basically disordered due to the heat um, caused by the uh, by the MOSFET. So the hope is that now um, we're just going to be able to have them all placed nicely. And it looks like I will need to use my hot air to put them in. Let's use the hot air to finish this off. Maybe a little bit of solder, uh, a little bit of flux as well. Okay. That should do. All right. So next, let's uh, examine the uh, the MOSFET in question. More than likely, that this is the MOSFET that caused all of the trouble. More than likely, that is the one that uh, is uh, shorted to ground. So let's uh, remove it. Conformal coating is very nice to prevent um, corrosion on the board, but it is a major pain with the slides during the repair, component level repair like this anyway. Because now I have to spend time um, removing the coating. There are ways to chemically remove it, but then you would have to remove it from like at least portion of the board on both sides and as you dip it into the uh, solvent and I don't want to do that. So, All right, we'll need a lot of heat to remove it. And off it goes. All right, this wasn't too bad. Now with the MOSFET removed, but all of the other components uh, still in place, including original inductors, let's find out if uh, the short is still present. I just plugged it into the power supply. The short is completely gone. Um, so I think we found our problem. Okay, so let's uh, clean this up and install the new MOSFET and see if the light is gonna work. All right, so first remove Excess solder. That looks good. Okay, so we just need to be careful because the gate for this MOSFET is over here. It looks like the pad is good, so nothing's lifted, nothing broke. Just need to make sure that we keep it that way. And let's put some new, fresh leaded solder. This is a little too much over here. Okay, that should be good. Let's put some fresh flux on. Now is the time to pick a brand new MOSFET replacement.
And now let's have it installed. Hopefully less heat will be needed now that we have leaded solder on there. Maybe a little bit more straight. This looks real good. Now I just need to remove excess um, solder everywhere. Now the MOSFET is in place. Now that the MOSFETs are replaced, I'm going to provide some power, uh, some current, and see if the short came back. Still no short. Okay, since there is no short, let's take it apart um, and uh, and do some quick testing while it's still disassembled. There are still concerns that uh, the failed MOSFET might have damaged um, some other circuitry, and some of the channels wouldn't work. So currently, it looks like I have my intensity off, and I have the color somewhere in the middle. So let's uh, give it a little bit of current. I'm not going to give it a whole lot because I'm too concerned that something else is going to go. Um, let's see if uh, this will turn on. Okay, the light is flashing. That's not a good sign, but there could be an indication that my current is too low. Let's increase the current a little, see if that helps. Yeah, it definitely shuts off and then goes into overdrive. All right, let's increase a little bit more current. And it looks like we still have a problem. All right, the short is back. Okay, so since Replacing the MOSFET didn't actually help. Let's take a look at other problems. So we know that the inductors are okay on the other side and the capacitor. Now, the next question I have is about this little diode over here. Let's see. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, this is this diode is gone, it's shorted. Let's look at a diode that's on another circuit, an ident identical diode next to an ident identical um, MOSFET. And this diode seems to be doing just fine. So what this tells me, yeah, what this tells me is that this diode is likely dead. Let's, uh, let's remove it. Yeah, you can see it's already disintegrating. Look at this. Yeah, this diode is done. That's it. Well, while we have it here, let's clean up the, um, the area. Okay, now that the diode is gone, let's uh, clean up the area. Something like that.
I'm going to remove some more of that conformal coating around the pads so that we have better connection. Okay, and now just add some leaded solder. I'm adding quite a bit of solder and I will explain in a minute why so. Now it's time to get a spare uh, diode. All right, let's get the spare one. Position it on the board. Uh, you can kind of see even from here, if I zoom in a little bit, you can kind of see that this diode is slightly bigger in size than the original. Um, Kessel is using a very peculiar diode type here. I very rarely see this type of form factor, this type of uh, casing on a diode. They use the very tiny one. Uh, this is rated the same way, if not higher, but it's the next size up. I'm not able to find the smaller size. There's only one company that makes them. And uh, they, I don't think that they make that anymore. So uh, we're going to use this diode, which is beefier, slightly larger, rated at least uh, the same rating as the original. And that's why I had to put extra solder on here, because the diode is larger. We need to make sure that the connection is, uh, is uh, proper. OK. So uh, soldering it is actually tough, uh, or should be tough, because because again, it's a little oversized, so I'm going to use my hot air to do it. And that's it. Perfect. Okay, let's remove it from the vise. And we'll keep it in this Frankenstein kind of way to see if uh, to see if it works. All right. Bench power supply and I have very little current going through. Not little, but not too much. So if it shuts off, um, it's probably because it did not uh, get enough current. All right, power on, and let's increase the intensity. All right, we're consuming almost the maximum that the power supply is set to provide right now. Obviously not as bright as, as it should be. This is blue channel, hitting white, and this is white. So far, so good. So far, so good. And this is both. Yeah, so far, so good. Next one. Now, uh, bump up the current. Uh, to the maximum of what that light is supposed to handle and turn it on again okay now let's start increasing intensity close to the maximum and this is about the maximum it will go let me increase this is the maximum of the mix of the channels in place and it's staying lit i think we fixed it all right, I'm not going to run it for too long because uh, while the um, uh, the heat sink is in place, the fan is not. So let's turn it off and let's go over um, the problems that we've uncovered with this light. So the issue originally with all of this was that um, likely the diode on one of these channels burned out and shorted. It's supposed to, if you look at the schematics of what's going on around here, I'll tell you that it's supposed to only conduct one way, and the only reason it would conduct the other way is on a power power off, on a shutdown, so that it prevents damaging the MOSFET. So when this guy shorted, it also overheated and damaged the MOSFET. Once we replaced the MOSFET, and then we replaced the diode, everything started working again. So that's yet another issue with Kessels that's repairable. We got it fixed, and it's going to be back in operation. Well, this completes this repair. If you enjoyed this video, as always, please like and subscribe, as that's important to me. And um, I will see you next time.